we think of money as a very finite resource which is why we keep thinking we have to earn it and then we have to store it somewhere for later on mm. but if we switch that perspective and realize that money is in fact in abundance we don't worry so much about it anymore mm. it's just as and when when you need it it will come to you For our listeners that don't know you, you know, uh, welcome to Chills with TFC. Uh, maybe just go one round, introduce yourself first. Uh, just kind of warm up, you know, let everybody get to know you a little bit. Yeah, your story, because everybody has a very long story today, I'm sure. <laughs> so, who wants to start first? So, hello, my name is Jane and yes, I am the founder of Going Slow. Um, we started with six members and now we have more than 350 members. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah. cool, that's cool. Mm. So, what, what, what is Going Slow about? So it started off as a support group for a couple of travellers who were rebellious enough to stay out during the pandemic. (laughs) When we received a notification from the government to be like, if you come back, we'll give you a free flight. Everyone's like, "Mm, pass. Oh, really? There was a free flight? Yeah, there was a free flight, free hotel stay, if you remember. Oh. Quarantine. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. free hotel stay. (laughs) Free hotel stay. Free hotel stay. stay. Okay, okay. (laughs) Okay. It's all about a perspective. Yeah, yeah, it's all about a perspective. Okay. Um, but but I guess all of us just kind of follow our our gut feel mm. to say that no, we're not ready to go back to Singapore yet. Mm. So it started out as a support system, and then um, because there were a couple of interviews with like Rice Media, the travel intern, people started like messaging me like, oh, you know, how should I start to be a digital nomad and everything? And I had no clue, obviously, because I didn't set out to be a digital nomad. So I just thought, okay, I'll put everyone in a group chat. And they can be they can be they support can themselves. themselves. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how we started. But of course now we with more intention we decided to start a group to normalize the idea of alternative lifestyles. Not mm. everybody wants to have the Singapore dream. Not everyone knows exactly what they want. Even the fire lifestyle, for example, not everyone wants that, but they want an alternative version of it. Mm. So Going Slow is really here to normalize mostly three things. The idea that you can take a sabbatical if you're not very happy with your life and you shouldn't feel shamed for it. The idea that you can perhaps pursue a lifestyle that is similar to a digital nomad one. If you ever wanted to try it out even for three months, six months, how do you go about doing it? Um, What is it like? We wanted to normalize it and also share our perspectives on it. And then the third one is to really say that um, we do want to normalize also just in in general a slower form of life because Mm. everything happens in Singapore at three times the speed. Do you feel so? I think more so, more so ever than now, coming back to Singapore, it's a double-edged sword, Mm. right? First, of course, things happen so fast. Everything's very efficient here. Public transport's amazing. In general, the economy works very efficiently. At the same time, it does cause people to find a bit um, of stress. Mm, mm, a bit is an understatement. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I get you and uh, we'll, we'll chat a little bit more yeah. you know, in, in due course. And Sam, yeah, okay. you want to introduce yourself? Hey guys, my name is Sam. Samuel. Uh, but Sam is fine. Everyone calls me Sam. I used to be a photographer for the last 12 years. Then I left Singapore in 2022 uh, to travel, to slow travel around mostly Asia. Um, then somehow found myself uh, across the border in uh, Kota Tinggi. Uh, and now I'm living on an um, agroforestry uh, regenerative farm. Uh, doing farm work. So, so you're another like, farmer now. So another photographer farmer, turned yeah. farmer. Uh, no, hawker is not cool already. <laughs> farmer is a new farmer thing. Is yeah. a new thing yeah. Farmer is a new thing. Yeah, come on man, gotta catch yeah, yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I will I will take it slow on that front. But but I, I will, maybe we should go and you know, visit you in the Yeah, farm. for sure. I think that'll be interesting. For okay, sure. okay, great, great, great. And I, I mean, uh, Sam is an understatement. Uh, he, he's one of the best photographers, right? So I heard uh, in, in, your, in your space. Yeah. And then uh, we go way back. Uh, yeah. You know, a um, few years back when we first started the podcast, he was a listener. And yeah, I, I, I think he came first... on the show 
They came on show. The very early, just the very early days. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 yeah. I, I don't think that that's that's on on YouTube. You know, maybe on the early early, early. audio podcast you can find it. Uh, I don't even remember what we talked about, yeah. but anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll go there later. And then Belle came on the show before, yeah. you know. But for our audience that somehow don't know you yet, would you like to just kind of yeah. give us a quick introduction yeah. of you? Um, hi, I'm Isabel. I run a travel blog called Bell Around the World and I've been running that brand for the past nine years now. I started in 2015. You sound of it. <laughs> oh no, I mean, it's, it's been such a long journey. I can't believe like how how fast or how long time has passed. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool. Um, I create both like content on written content as well as YouTube content. Um and I also like recently, like a couple of years back, started offering SEO services. So I do teach um, marketing, digital marketing, and I also service brands mm, around mm. the world now. So uh-huh. have been traveling full time for six years and now tuning in towards more slower type of travel. Interesting. Okay, okay. And and I think Bell shared a lot of good stuff uh, in the other episode that we did together, you know, about building a website and, and all that jazz. So check it out. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like everybody's trying to slow down, yeah? So like not everybody wants to do that whole like rapid travel, you know, go from one place to another yeah. type of situation anymore. So maybe anybody want to take a jab at this, like what is slow travel? You know, like what, what is this whole thing about? For me, I think... It kind of depends. Like for me, I, I wasn't traveling to see all of the sites mm. or go to all of the touristy places. I just wanted to live life. Mm. Um, and I I was just exploring the kind of life that I wanted. I wanted to surf. I wanted to be close to the ocean. So those were the places I looked for. Uh, you know, in Taiwan, in Japan, in Bali. Mm. Places where I can just be there for like two to three months mm. and gain some normalcy, some routine, uh, find some friends, build some friendships and just, I'm, I'm quite a boring person. So just <laughs> doing the same things every day, like just go surfing, have breakfast, read my books, just very normal stuff. Uh, and then of course you meet friends and you go on little adventures here and there. And so I think that was the life I was looking for. I was, I think I was just looking for some peace. Uh, yeah, in my life, Singapore yeah. is too too fast paced and too stressful, uh, uh, that's uh, why, uh, that's uh, uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I think more than that, it was. Um, I mean, I I had everything when when I was working. Yeah, I had I a know. good career and yeah. a house and uh, you know a marriage. Yeah. Um, but I remember feeling depressed too. Mm. I remember feeling very lonely, and I remember feeling depressed in a way that I. I thought to myself like, oh, is this how the rest of my life is going to be? Because mm. I already have everything, right? And is, is every day going to be like that? And I just got so depressed. I, um, I didn't know what to do. And I was stuck. I was mm. stuck. Not that I was forced to be here, but everything is so good. Right? So why would I leave? Mm. Um, then only so you I, struggle with that? I struggle with that. Uh, uh, tell, tell me a little bit more. How, how does that feel? In what sense? Like, <clears throat> because a lot of people would think like, oh, you leave because you don't like it, right? right. But in, in the parameters of how Singapore defines success for the mm. middle class, right? actually, I mean, personally, I know that you pretty much hit all of it, mm. right? So, yeah. so yeah, the success story of the Singapore story <laughs> on yeah. some level, right? Yeah. Not scholar, you know, you're not high flyer that way, but, mm. you know, amongst the, the mass, mm. you can consider yourself successful. Fairly okay. Yeah, right? fairly okay, right? Yeah. And then, and, but you're so disjointed with it. Yeah. So how, how, how did that, how did that feel? I asked myself the same question and it's funny, right? Because when, when I look at the checklist, I think every <laughs> box, I've kind of like achieved everything, but there is no joy. Yeah. So then I asked myself, how come? And maybe it's because the conditions that I needed to achieve were not mine in the first place. It was put in by society or I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Or, very whoa, elevated. Whoa, whoa. Very elevated. Yeah, you're vibing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're share, vibing, your, man. share your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, share your thoughts. Take a jab at it. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. I think uh. I I felt the same as you. At age 25, I earned my earned 100,000. Mm. And that was a wake up call because I remember sitting there not feeling any pride in myself at all. In fact, just worrying when, is, when, I'm, when am I going to earn the next 100,000? Mm. And, you know, I was sitting in my EC, 
in a in you know having my coffee in the morning and you know living that Instagram dream yeah, life yeah, yeah. and going like With the BGM at the back, right? Right. Low fi, low fi, low fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, till date, I still remember that I spent an exorbitant amount of money for a bar, and I was just sat, sat there thinking, "What an imposter!" Mm. Like mm. I felt so fake mm. because this is not my life. It's not the life that I wanted. It's mm. not. Then whose life am I living? You know, mm. and mm. I'm sure it's some it makes some people happy, but I think without even talking to other people and knowing that they're also un- unhappy. That conversation already happened for sure. You know, I, I found out that a lot of people were not happy doing this. You also start to realize if it's not us who are spoiled, if it's not us that the problem lies in, then maybe the like the system is broke or maybe the system is just not real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, yeah. wow. Okay. But do you share this? I would say that Growing up, we have had this standard route, right? Go to school, get good grades, um, aspire to get a good job. So I was already projecting my life that way, you know, get a BTO. I think there's an inside joke on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then In the previous episode, <laughs> she said, you know, BTO... <laughs> I said BTO yeah. was inspired, uninspiring. uninspiring. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, girls summed up the whole thing, right? I totally Ooh. understand. It's not that it's bad. In yeah. fact, it is quite good quality for that price. It's yeah. just uninspiring. So the word is uninspiring. Yeah, uninspiring. yeah I think you summed it up. That yeah, was great. But yeah, that was the projected life. And then I like very fortunately managed to go for on an exchange. And then I started doing things out of my usual hmm. Routine Like I was couch surfing and I was sleeping on the couch. Nobody sleeps on a couch in Singapore. Um, meeting different people and having to adapt to different lifestyles. And that really opened my eyes to how different lives can be, how can be led. Like I've seen artists, I've seen musicians and they're so happy in their lives because they are doing what their passion work is. Um, and they may not be earning like a hundred thousand, but they're still happy and fulfilled. So then I came back and then I was like, wow, I want to leave. Like, I didn't know such an alternate lifestyle was possible until I got out there and I've seen the world. And up till then, I still had to graduate from uni and then um, get a job because who's going to hire you? How are you going to make your mark if you are not, uh, if you don't have like some form of work experience in your belt? So I did that for a year and then I was like, so back then I already had the blog and I had this like little tiny dream of maybe being able to get paid to travel one day. Didn't know if the blog would work because it's Singapore and everything's very realistic here. Um, but one day like... You control I f- the jabs a bit. Huh? <laughs> That's serious, but yes, it's No, but it's a effect also. Um, <laughs> then, um, yeah, just like my, my work, my work was, there was nothing to complain about it. It was just mm. routine and... And honestly, I felt like I didn't grow. Mm. So one day I had this opportunity to go to New Zealand um, on, a, an, on an assignment. That was when I was like, okay, this must be a sign. Let's try applying for the working holiday. So mm. I did that. Well, fast forward to today, like all this full-time travel has taught me a lot of things. Um, but it has also like 56 countries later, right? It has, at some point, I have kind of like... Um, Figured out my preferences, my likes, dislikes, what I prefer, how I would like my lifestyle to be led, and all the different borrowed lives that I've tried living in in other people's shoes and in different countries. Um, and so eventually, it was just time for me to slow down and try and find a lifestyle that I feel content living in. Mm-hmm. So, so you're in that phase of life where yeah. you're trying to create a life that you actually like. Yeah. Okay, okay. After after collecting all the experiences, yeah. all, all 56 I countries. I think it's kind of cool what she said, you know, because mm. as you slow travel, every in every country, you get to pretend like who you want to be. You know, like maybe maybe you're in New York and you can pretend, pretend to be Carrie Bradshaw. <laughs> or, you know, you go to have turkey, you, you get to be someone else. Mm, because yeah. in Singapore, you just have to be like a marker or something. There's this kind of, there's this something. magic in being anonymous, right? Yeah. Sh- share a bit more. Where you kind of like, weaves through the world and no one knows you and you're you're allowed to just be yourself mm. you're allowed to spend time with yourself and meet new people without any judgment on who you were previously without judging anyone 
and build all these new lives. Like I, I, I love how you said borrowed lives. Like you, you are a different person in like every country and every different community, and you constantly change. We constantly change as well, right? Who we were in Singapore isn't who we were like when we travel, and then when we come back, we come back as a different person, and we leave again, and yeah, just constantly changing and. Yeah. I think that was my problem. I didn't know necessarily who I was. Because, mm. you know, after so many years of trying to pretend who you're not, after 26 years of trying to be the perfect model Singaporean, who are you really? Mm. So I had to go through a couple of rounds of shedding away the mm. conditional layers of who I'm not. And even right now, sometimes I can catch myself in moments going like, wait, th- is this what I really think? And then I take some time to process it. Mm. But, yeah. What Was there a moment where you felt like, oh... I finally kind of realized who I am. Or sorry, I feel like I'm hijacking the. <laughs> no, 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 We're just talking about yeah, ourselves yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, no, but, um, but I, I think I think the it's not uncommon to feel that way, but sometimes I feel like uh, people just remove that whole self or the original self to mm-hmm. to kind of take on the the other side, the flip side of the coin. You know, that means it's not, it's not particularly healthy in my worldview also. Yeah. You know? I think identity yeah. is based on so much. It's based on the value systems that you have. It's based on what you think is important. It's also kind of based on the awareness of the fact that you are not just one person or you... Your, the, the idea of a self is fluid. Hmm. Right? Who you are can change along the uh, your life and it's okay to not stick to one identity. You know, we... We find in Singapore, for example, we attach a lot of our, our identity to our jobs, what we do, and that defines them, uh, us. Whether we are parents, whether we are not, you know, what kind of a child we are. We, we have all these ways of identifying mm. ourselves. And I think that's, that's exactly like you said. Sometimes attaching an identity to what we do and, um, you know, the kind of roles that we've given ourselves is easier mm. because then the alternative would be that, oh, maybe I don't actually want... Mm, 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 fair. So then, after doing all the things that you do, what do you want then? What do I want? Yeah. What do you What do you really want? It's a long story, man. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're here for a reason, right? What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> I mean, I was to all the countries I was in. I was mostly just like surfing every day. Yeah. And then it got to a point where I was really enjoying my myself in the ocean, mm. But it also got to the point where I was like, um, I want to do something meaningful in my life. Mm. I want my life to mean something and not just personal fulfillment, personal enjoyment. Um, so I remember it was 2017 where I felt pretty disgruntled in my life and I was watching Chef's Table actually and mm. I felt really inspired. I was like, oh my God, these guys are doing something so cool and inspiring and I felt so like my job is so meaningless and I'm not really making much of an impact. But I couldn't. Because I was stuck in Singapore, I was in the HDB, right? Um, then when I was in Bali, I somehow a friend of mine um, asked if, uh, told me that she was going to this uh, eco village in Japan. And that afternoon, I remember thinking about, thinking about that place. I, in my mind, I was just seeing like the rice paddy fields, just the sound of the wind, no one, just a quiet village. And immediately my heart was like, I need to go there. Mm. I, I need to live that life because I just wanted peace and I wanted to finally I wanted to do things with my hands mm. I've been working with the computer for the last 10 years every every day editing shooting so much I just wanted to do things with my hands one breath at a time mm. just focusing on one thing at a time not thinking about anything else so I went uh, I wasn't into farming back then but I went and I started to ex- see how they experience life Mm. Uh, the simple joys in life and how they cherish food how they grow food and how they really appreciate everything Mm. uh, their way of living and I think that really touched me a lot so Mm. yeah I mean when I came back I I found it harder to stay here for the time being because of what I experienced in Japan Mm. and I also felt that I mean, I ask myself, what do I want my life to look like? And I think I want to help. I just want to help. Mm. I want to help the earth. I want to help communities. I want to help the forests that are being depleted. Mm. Uh, there's so many things that's going on in the world right now that is just not great. 
and I, w- I only have two, mm. one pair of hands. Mm. What can I do? But I just try my best. Mm. So I think I, that's what I want my life to be, just to help. Okay, okay, yeah. fair, fair, fair. And you want a base, right? Pretty well, much. I think the bigger, <laughs> the bigger picture is like throughout. Not everybody needs a big picture, yeah? Okay, <laughs> but not, no, but not every conversation need to be high and mighty <laughs> with a mission, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. but I mean throughout my, my whole journey, one it, there was one thing I felt most pertinent more than anything, which was that the I, I want to be able to enjoy my freedom and my independence and not be bound. I think maybe because of how we were brought up, like how we were, maybe we had this idea of what life should be. Mm. That's why when I went out there, it made me want even more to have that freedom and freedom of choice and freedom mm. of being able to do what you love, but still be able to sustain that lifestyle. Mm. Mm. So it's not so much like just a base, but really the base opens up more possibilities and i guess i i i enjoy knowing that i have the possible the endless possibilities open to you and like if you want to surf you can go surf if you want to learn horse riding the next day you can go and learn horse riding which i guess is the whole thing about financial independence and yeah. so um yeah and i enjoy like showing people that it's possible you know if you are disgruntled with your job you don't have to be stuck in that job forever there are real life cases where people have been able to get out of it, like all of all of us here. Um, and so like being able to inspire people to get out of their rut because life is short. You're going to, how many years are you going to spend like feeling stuck in a rut? Mm, mm, mm. But, but I think the context here is actually all of y'all were doing quite, all of you are doing quite well financially. I mean, mm. from, from our casual conversation offset, la, mm. right? I know everybody's doing quite well financially. Are you not able to create or recreate the thing that you wanted to or you want to here in Singapore? Mm. Right? Because assuming money money solves a lot of things, right? Assuming mm. that. Mm. Right? Can't you recreate that here? Mm. You know, like whatever you're seeking. Maybe Singapore not a lot of place to farm. Right? NEA will look for you. Lah. <laughs> I don't know. N-Pucks will come, okay? <laughs> but but yeah. I think is, that's it, is it not the, possible? I think that's the lie we were being told, right? Mm. That money can solve everything. Mm. Mm. I mean... I mean, Reggie, you, you mm. invest and I invest and sometimes mm. you see our portfolio jump up by like, what, five five figures and you feel nothing. Mm. I mean, I feel nothing. Yeah, yeah, do, you, yeah, do you feel I, the I same know, way? I know what you mean. I know and it's mean. like, oh. When you first started, it's very exciting. Correct. And at some point, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, the next day, down five figures, it's like, oh, wait, okay, what? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, we chase <laughs> this so much, but was that the point mm. in the first place? We, we knew that money was the medium, is the medium that will help us to, you know, allow us to live the life that we want. But a lot of us forget that, right? After we reach that amount, we still continue to chase it. It became the goal itself. And then it becomes, there is no joy, mm-hmm. right? You, you mm-hmm. can have like big cars and, and whatever, like all the entertainment that you, you want, but mm-hmm. there is no joy in your heart. So maybe what the, the thing is, what can you do to uncover the layers to find out who you really are? What is your truth? Mm. Maybe your truth is just you want to live a really simple life mm. and you you just want to backpack or, you know, you really don't need that much money. And I understand sometimes, you know, like Dave Chappelle says, sometimes we have to be the lion to be the lamb that we really are. Mm. And we have mm. to earn this money so that we can have this like quiet, peaceful life, right? Mm. But I think because the, the pressure here is so much that sometimes we forget, we got lost in the process. We mm. kind of forget who we are and what we really want. Mm. Yeah. So also just to let people know that, because I think we are all like Chinese people here sitting, right? There's this risk of something yeah, not, like we have Chinese tra- privilege. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, but, no. but also just to share yeah, that yeah, even yeah. though I used to earn like quite a lot of money, right? After or during my marriage, I lost all of my money. Mm. Um, ordering, for various reasons. Ordering your marriage. <laughs> no, no, no. For yeah. the various reasons okay. like. And, and when I was going through my divorce, I basically started with zero. Mm. I remember when I was traveling and when I was backpacking, I had like maybe less than $3,000 in my bank. Mm. And I was in Mexico and I was deciding whether I should come back to Singapore or continue traveling with no idea whatsoever how I was going to finance the, the travels. And it took me, I don't know, a good one year or two to slowly build back my savings. So I basically lost almost everything before the age of 28 mm. and I start from scratch and I didn't have a career to rely on anymore 
But I think the point here is, like my dad always says, if it's a problem that we can, can be solved by money, then it's not a problem at all. Mm. Because money is really just a tool. Mm. And we have been brought up in the world, in this capitalistic world, to think that money is not in abundance. But if you think about it, all the basic necessary resources that we really need to survive as human beings, air, water, food, most of us do have access to this. Mm. And you don't go around going like, oh, I need to accrue and invest more oxygen. Mm. Or I need to, you know, start building up a, a, a water tank for myself. Mm. Okay, mm. we do have water tanks, but you know what I mean. Mm. So we think of money as a very finite resource, which is why we keep thinking we have to earn it and then we have to store it somewhere for later on. Mm. But if we switch that perspective and realise that money is, in fact, in abundance we don't worry so much about it anymore. Mm. It's just as and when when you need it, it will come to you. As and when when you need access to it, it will come to you. But it's more of like, what are you going to do with the money? Even if tomorrow I give you a million dollars, do you know what you're going to do with the money? Mm. Who are Who is that person that's going to be holding that wealth? Mm. Are you happy with that person? I think those are like the deeper questions that we mm-hmm. had while we were travelling. Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I did the long, long travel, so so I, I, yeah. I get a, I get a good sense of these things. And now I stay in the suburb, right? Or like some of my friends say, I stay in the kampong, like, which I don't, you know. But I stay in the suburb. So, so the, the banana tree, the papaya tree, they just grow outside. Don't need to work very hard, man. That's why in Malaysia, papaya and banana, you just cannot sell for a price. They have to sell to Singaporeans. And because it's just everywhere. It just grows on its own. And it's durian trees everywhere. Yeah, durian trees everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. And people don't even need to work very hard for it. Yeah. Right? So so it's a but, but it's a city problem, right? Like, mm. like in the sense of it's a reality of the city life. Mm. Right? So so I, I, I'm a little bit cautious to everything is Singapore problem, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah, just no, a it's, city. It's, sure. it's, it's a very modern, city modern thing. City it's for sure yeah. a city yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, it, you're yeah. exactly right. When I travel, so you get to see that <laughs> it's not just in Singapore that we experience all this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any city you go in the world, there are all these big shiny lights yeah, to get you to buy sure. things you don't really need. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, after we travel and you come back, you realize Singapore has really done well. Mm. Yeah. Singapore is really good. I mean, it's great. It's mm. really you know, safe, yeah. stable. It, it has its own beauty. It has its own it beauty. A, but in the parameters of the life that you want today, yeah. it does not allow you to do yeah. that here. Yeah. I think I, in that sense. Uh, yeah. I think to that point, I guess city life living versus maybe living in somewhere more humble. Like coming back to Singapore after, you know, months and months of traveling overseas, you're kind of just surrounded by... What are you surrounded by? Malls. You're surrounded by more materialism type of things. And coming back, it's, I sometimes get this reverse culture shock where like living in Bali or Mexico or Guatemala, people kind of make do with what they have and they're super content. Mm. They never complain. They they have everything they need. They, they have their family gatherings. Um, they drink beers on Friday and they're still very content with that. And that is something that I kind of want to take away from and mm. I want to encompass into my life and into my mindset um, but sometimes living like coming then then coming back to Singapore it's like as much as you try to be um, positive about your mindset and everything mm. um, it's the pressures it's the external pressures that that come onto you where you're like can okay, you pinpoint that because it's something that I also feel yeah but I I, I cannot seem to pinpoint the pressure very clearly M- maybe yet. it's just getting a cup of coffee that's seven dollars okay versus a two dollar cup of coffee in Lisbon. Yeah. Mm. I, I've had a friend who just visited from Lisbon and she was like, oh my God, this freaking coffee is like seven fifty, and in Lisbon you can get it for like two euros. Mm. It's the fact that you have to pay to relax. Yeah, that's mm. true. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like the avenues that you that you require to make a well-balanced life, exercise, good nutrition, um, some, sort, some sort of joy or hobby, you mm. have to pay everything for is everything. Monetized, right? everything. Everything is monetized. Everything is monetized. It's, okay. it's, it's, um, it's forty dollar grab rides. Mm. Like, come on, then grab what's going on. Yeah, yeah so pay eighty dollars <laughs> to learn how to float. I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay. pay like what hundred plus dollars to <laughs> ha- learn how to surf in trifecta or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 it's yeah. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, for if you want to rent a surfboard in 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 Bali, it's like five dollars. Five and bucks. In Singapore, how much do you have to yeah. rent it for? No idea, mm. man. Yeah, mm. so I mean, for sure, Singapore is for the wealthy, it's unless the you know how to make do with your lifestyle here. Yeah. Mm. Which then, you know, if you're if you're social creatures and you have to hang out with your friends, mm. how many times are you gonna reject your friends going out for dinners mm. and, mm. and stuff? Mm. Fair, fair, fair. Mm. That there is a downside to wealth, right? Like, for example, if uh, if we aren't so wealthy, if we are not such a wealthy country. Perhaps we have to make do with what we have. We have to be more communal. 
uh, we have to be more about community, about family, about sharing. Yeah, there's a lot of research on this. Right? Maybe Where if we, we need a power drill, we can share amongst yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we need uh, to clean the house, we do it ourselves. Yeah. But because we have money, we pay our way through things. Why do I need to be friendly to my neighbor when I can just pay someone to provide mm. that service? Yeah, right? that, that is the real issue. We've mm. come to a point in, in becoming so fall, like modern mm. that if we... You know, we all want to have a more sustainable world and we all want to save the, the, the world and everything. I won't say all, but, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I hear you, yes. Are we okay with not being able to buy like chicken, fish and vegetables at 24 hours of the day? Mm. Isn't it really unnatural that you can walk into Xinjiang anytime you want mm. and be able to buy anything that you need? Because mm. mm. it doesn't happen like that in the natural world, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. That's why I don't buy off-season durian. It's all frozen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, fair, fair. Hey, welcome to the Financial Coconut Podcast Network. I'm your host, Reggie, aka Your Chief Financial Coconut. And if you are loving what we are creating here, like, share, subscribe, share with your loved ones, comment in the comment section below. And yeah, we'll see you for great content on Chill Swift TFC. With this, I think we set a quite a, a parameter of thought around like a way of life in Singapore, right? Mm. Because you're trying to address it. Beyond just the monetary side of things, you're trying to address it from the ideological level, right? Mm. Where this is how you look at things, you know, this is how um, if your perspectives change, a lot of these problems are no longer a problem, right? Mm. On some on some level, uh, that's what I hear from the crew, right? So so with, with that as the backdrop, then how do you square your monetary situation, right? Are you not in the pursuit of whatever material comfort? Because isn't it true that the, the baseline of the middle class life is material comfort, mm. right? So how are you then accumulating your finances? How, you, how do you, with, with this, because I think you laid your point of view, right? Mm. How are you looking at money then at this point in time? You know, how are you making it? How are you investing? How are you, how are you playing with all these things? Yeah. Right. I, would, I would say from a middle class point of view, you earn a certain income, right? Like not too much, not too little. It's all about what you prioritize spending. Mm. Maybe for me, it's t I prioritize experiences versus getting the latest iPhones. Mm. Um, I prioritize maybe not buying a $7.50 cup of coffee and maybe making just yeah, my just own. Yeah, just get a mocha pot. La. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's about priorities and, and, and then putting your money into like savings or investments and things like that. But the general gist is it's all about the perspective. Whether you want to intention, like how intentional are you with spending? Is it like getting the latest gadget? Is it getting the handbag to to sh be able to show off to your colleagues or your friends? Mm. Things like that. Mm. But is that stereotype still true for Singaporeans? I mean, I'm just curious. The whole showing yeah, the whole shebang of like oh, I need to get keep up with the image and all that. I'm just yeah. just curious. But what's your? Thought? I think it depends on the circle of friends that you surround yourself with. Mm. I could surround myself with people who are wearing shattered. I mean, like I have friends, lifelong friends that, lifelong friends that you know really prioritize like maybe more being on the ground, being more realistic, um, being having other priorities in life rather than just looking dapper. She's trying to say that her friends have like holes in their clothes. Like, <laughs> I, I, I do have one hole in my pants. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> so, I can be your friend after well, this. Well, well, okay, yeah. okay, fair, fair, fair. But but but. but to add the backdrop for the audience, you should listen to the episode with Belle. Actually, you make quite good income uh, today. I mean, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So even with that type of income flow, yeah. you still spend like that. You still think like this. For me, like, okay, so I went back, before I, before I did this podcast, I went back to like really dissect my income, right? Out of the 100% of the income that I earn, I spend maybe 40% of it on travel and life expenses 20 percent on business expenses so i still have that bulk of 40 40 percent left mm. for savings so it's people keep saying oh you must have had a sugar daddy in order to <laughs> travel as much as you did but they what they don't see is like okay there are so many alternative ways of traveling you can be couch surfing you can be staying with friends house over the years of you know meeting people along the way i've had a lot of a lot of meaningful connections that i've had that of of friends that would you know happily host you yeah. it's not a very transactional relationship that that people might think yeah 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 okay. so yeah. there's just a lot of way to live sustainably like maybe you can live in a farm you can be like 
you work in exchange. Work away. Ta kong huan su. Yeah, you work in exchange yeah. uh, for yeah. accommodation. Sorry for the Mandarin. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. So these are different different ways to like cut down your costs on living the way you want to live. Mm-hmm. Which is essentially what you're doing now, right? Kind of. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. work in the farm and then they don't charge you a rent. You don't yeah, you, you I mean, use your labor. And, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then how, how are you managing your money then? How are you doing money? Um. Well, I, I think I want to preface this by saying that I already accumulated before I did this. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that is the preface, <laughs> which is a matter of fact. But yes, yes, please continue. I think I preface this by saying that it's it's really natural to want to have comfort in your life. Mm. And I think I'm at an age where a lot of my friends have like two, three kids. Mm. Mm. And uh, I can see how expensive education is and how expensive it is to have kids. And yeah, you know, they're really living like just normal average lives but they still have to both husband and wife have to work uh, in, in order to carry on living here yeah. you know to provide for their family mm. and I think that's it is tough and I think I'm in a really privileged position uh, to be able to live the life that I can live yeah so the, the way I do it is um, I think once I started uh, traveling and also doing workaways and exchanges like this, I look back and I realized that I wasted a lot of my life. Because, mm. you know, Reggie, I was really mm. obsessing over the fire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was really spreadsheet every day trying to reach that amount. And then I get to this point of my life where I'm really contented, happy with what I'm doing, how I'm living. And I'm not spending much. I'm only spending like a thousand ish a month mm. then I think back to the times in the last decade where I sacrificed so much of my relationships where I wasn't present even when my physical body was present I was just thinking about how to earn how to work and I realized I, I missed so much for money that I actually don't really need mm. because maybe the life that I needed don't really need so much money after mm. all mm. Um, so but the practical answer is my income comes from I think three three different uh, sources one is my rental income Mm. so I do get a little bit of rent uh, from my HDB I get you know dividends and interest from my cash Mm. that has you know now is yielding like three plus percent yeah on average on mm. average. La. Mm. And the rest is from my index funds, la, mm. which is I'm not spending yet. I'm just accumulating la, for mm. whenever. So your life is still tied to Singapore? La. It's yeah. still tied to Singapore. <laughs> la. I'm still Singapore. La. My yeah, passport yeah. still red colour. Yeah. Still got to make the HDB rent. Still, still got to do. Still gotta do. You got to find the next person to, to do the slog. Yeah, thanks, HDB. <laughs> so, so, oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, fair, fair. Yeah. But, but you see, right? You see, you see where, I'm, where I'm going with this, right? Like there's yeah. a lot of things that that people talk about, you mm. know, Singapore, blah, 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 mm. blah, you know, which which I get it because I mean, yeah. I, I've been there, done that, right? Yeah. I, I kind of understand the disdain for it. But a mm. lot of the people's way of life, you know, mm. uh, it's still tied to, yeah. you know, the financial aspect of it, making yeah. money here. Okay, but like, know, I, yeah, I know that. like, here's the thing, right? Mm. I think the perspective is that you need to have the money before you can find joy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. But to be honest, we are all the generator to create the income. Mm. It's not like you get joy after you get the money. It's, or at least for me, having experimented over the last four years, because I came from sales and business development, and then I decided, okay, I'm going to do a huge career switch. I realized it's about doing something that you enjoy first, and then knowing that you will be supported financially because of it. Mm. So, when I wanted to go into the marketing industry, for example, it was a slight... Uh, I, I mean, some people will, will say that I took a lesser pay mm. to do this job. But then I told them I wanted to learn about marketing. I knew I'd have no experience. Instead of going back to school, which is some pe- what some people might have done, take a course, and, you know, I realized that this marketing agency was giving me a job that I wanted to learn from. And they were essentially paying me to learn about marketing. So mm. who cares if it's like a 20 or 30% decrease in they my just income. Just go for it. <laughs> yeah. They're literally paying me to learn about yeah. something that I, w- I wanted to learn anyway. And I think when you change your perspective and you go like, I am the generator of income, which means if I don't enjoy what I'm doing, I'm not going to be able to earn an income very happily mm. anyway. But if I can, and you know, like, so it's not like 
you like you are the person earning the income. Mm. So why wouldn't you take care of this generator? Why wouldn't you take care of this machine? No, but it's not mutually exclusive, right? Right, for you, sure. you can take care and at the same time still generate for right? sure for right? sure so it's, 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 it's just not being too extreme on, on either side for yeah. sure yeah, yeah. so so on, on, on that note mm. as well I think it's also about spending within your means mm, mm. so for for example if you are earning a lesser amount of income prioritize what gives you joy and not what you think you have to do in order to look good to other yeah. people for sure for sure yeah. Maybe just add some context. Like, how are you making your money at this point? Because I, I already know how they make their money. Come so on, how, how, come on, James. How do you make beans. your money? Tell us, tell us. <laughs> tell us the secret yeah, sauce. Yeah, how does this work for you? I mean, for me, I... After I... Because I used to be a financial planner. So, mm. after I started up my savings again, I basically forced myself to save um, a certain amount every month that I will know I will use in my retirement. And for me, whatever I need in my retirement, I don't think too much into it. I don't actively manage it. I just kind of like throw it aside and know that this is the percentage of money that I'll get. Um, and then for active income-wise, I, I have my marketing agency job. I also run my own business, uh, which is human design. So I do human design readings. Um, what is human design? That's a whole new topic. Yes, you yes, gotta yes, invite yes. me back again. Podcast. Really? Okay, give me the spiel. One minute, I give you one like, minute. Invite yes. me back again. Yeah, okay. What um, is human basically design? Basically, it's a system that helps people to figure out who they were born to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Based on like your date of birth and everything, so mm. it's a bit spiritual in some sense. Very uh, spiritual. It's like the Western yeah. version of Pazi. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know what you're saying. But it's the okay. Western version, so it's not at all like Pazi. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, okay. um. So I, I do have, act, like, that's why I consider active income and actively exchanging my hours for money. But of course, you know, I invest as well. So, but that aside, you know, it's just, these are all things that people can do anytime. It's more of the way that I see money now. Mm. The perspective of how I spend my money is completely different from, say, like, four years ago. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Fair, yeah. fair, fair. I mean, I, I, I understand the point of view, right? Yeah, but sometimes it just feels like, okay, uh, you're singing to the choir. Like, people that get it, they get it, right? And people that don't, they yeah. they don't, right? So, I'm, I'm trying to understand, like, where's that, where's that disjoint? You, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Why, why can't people get this point of view? Mm. I think for me, I've realized that it doesn't start with the material things. Mm. It really starts with inspecting who you are and it, it starts from figuring out what it is that makes you unhappy. Mm. So if somebody realizes that they're unhappy or that they are a bit lost in their life, it's maybe having some physical distance or mental distance from the people who have influence on their life and going to figure out why am I unhappy mm. Mm. and start from there. Mm. It's, yeah, this sound this is sounding like life advice here. Yeah, yeah. Financial <laughs> yeah, advice. Yeah, yeah. But like one point but I this is not financial advice, but yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But one point I wanted to add was that like just to allow I think a lot of us are afraid. Like we're used to this lifestyle. We're afraid of veering anywhere else. Mm. So it's like just allowing yourself that grace or like that time period or that grace period to maybe take a sabbatical mm. or to mm. do something different. Maybe you need the courage of a friend or an external motivator, but like maybe just being open to to that switch rather than just go by life the way it always has been. Mm. And then, yeah, like based on what Jane was saying to start questioning what drives you, what doesn't drive you, what mm. how you feel about certain things and then explore from there. Yeah, yeah. So fair, I fair. Think, yeah. I, I mean, I get it. So just, just to kind of dig a little bit on this, right? It's the sole parameter of your decision, your happiness. I think, I think, and also to add context, are all of you single? No. Yes. No, you're not right single. Now. You're single. Uh, I mean single no. in the sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need, okay, I don't need to it's know great, dating. I don't need to know dating status. I just need to know whether you're married. Are you tied down to something? Do you have kids? You know, all that. No, no, no. Okay. Single, so, single, so, no kids, not married, lah. Okay, no okay. kids, no married. Okay, I don't need to care about your relationship <laughs> status. Okay, okay. <laughs> not that you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because I, I, I mean, I just want to put it out there, right? Because I think a lot of people would, would kind of comment section. I confirm can envision people say, "Oh, single, ma, single, all can think like that, right?" Yeah, I'm privileged. Right? So, I mean, so, I'm so, no, 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 don't need to hide behind the privilege thing. But, 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 I, 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 I just want to put it out there. Right? So, this is the context that we're providing. The audience. Okay? But it's also a choice. Like lifestyle inflation, as much as as 
you start earning more, are mm. you going to start spending more? Are you going to start looking for a bigger house? For sure. It's a, an active choice. For sure, for we sure. We can go back to being farmers as a couple <laughs> and still raise kids yeah. and live in a caravan. You know, there are so many stories yeah. about that. For yeah, sure, we can tell you sure. so many instances of nomadic families yeah. who, you know, live on the road, mm. who homeschool their kids, even though they earn probably household income is less than 5000 mm. It's possible. I think the issue here is that many people think that oh, I don't like my existing lifestyle, but I can't do anything about it. Mm. They think that they don't have free will yeah. or a choice to change their lives. I, I think no one wakes up one day, decides to quit their job and becomes a, become a farmer. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like almost no one. Is that how you're summing up your story? I think so. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> but I think something drastic has happened yeah. in your life, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the... Um, well, Singapore is really great modern it has everything that's the good part but it's also the bad part mm -hmm. because you get so comfortable that you just bear with the unhappiness mm -hmm. you you feel this void in your heart but you you're like you you use your mind to overcome it we are really good at that right we are taught to use rational reasons so we lay out the reasons yeah we have this we have this life is good right? we use our mind to overcome the intuition in our heart Whereas the heart says we have to go, we have to do something, but we we use logic la, to mm. overcome it. And we stay in this gray space where it's like slightly uncomfortable but still bearable. And I think that is probably one of the I don't know, I it is not a great place to be. La. Sometimes when the pain gets too much, that you have to wake up, you have to change. It's kind of like a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Whereas well when you're in that gray space where things are like not so good, not so bad, then you kind of just go through your life like this, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. Which is why I think people need to be more aware of how they're feeling because this doesn't, this doesn't, like not everybody is unhappy. Mm. Sometimes people are also yeah. actually okay. And, and it's totally fine life. to be living here comfortable life. It's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. sometimes mm. people are actually okay with living the Singapore lives and I mean, it's a very comfortable one. Many yeah. people around the world would, would love to have this life. Yeah. It's more of like, is this what you personally want? Mm. So it's, mm. it's being aware and being in tune into your own awareness level so that you know, oh, you know, so for example, I have some people who, um, I have some friends who were considering job switches after two or three years but if you ask them, are you happy for everyday work? They go like, yeah. And then I'm like, why do you want to? Why do you want to leave then? <laughs> because everybody is saying need to change. Yeah, because career. everybody, you know, like yeah, yeah, on my LinkedIn, yeah. it will look yeah, weird if yeah. I don't switch like jobs. Yeah, if I don't jump, cannot la. Yeah, or you know, for example, like some 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 people will go like, oh yeah, you know, I have to send my kids to international school mm. or to a private kindergarten because the the going the going is that you know like. If I don't, then my, my kids are not going to have as, as many opportunities. Mm. Is this really true? Like, is what you think really true? Or is this a conditioning influence around you? Mm, yeah. On, on the other hand, I mean, if you are you have a family in Singapore, you're happy with your job, you're happy with your family life, you're happy here, just stay. No, they probably yeah, stopped listening already. They're not even tuning in. They're they're like, what, what, what is this crap? You know, they, at the, at the yeah. five main point, it's like, okay, like, I get what this, uh, this today's episode is about. It's not me, like, I'm fine. See, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm this quite sure. Thank you, Dad. Yes, yes, yeah. No, exactly. Exactly yeah. what, like what you said, right? Because I think that's how people square it, you know? As much yeah. as there's a lot of dichotomy around, right? But I think a lot of people think like, ah, this bunch of people cannot make it here, lah. That's why they just leave, lah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why I gave you so much time to establish your stories right? right because i i don't think that is the truth in fact i feel like there's a lot of people that are very proficient that are finding it very meaningless to be here and they are mm. leaving for whatever reason that it is okay so so i just want to pull it back you know knowing knowing generally how much you are making your, your way of life how you're spending and all that right uh, pulling it back to the finance podcast mm. like what bell was trying to do <laughs> 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 what are some of the tools out there that you actually use you know, like for yourself, you know, um, like what type of insurance do you go for? Because you travel a lot, you know, some of these things. Do you, what, what, type, what type of banking accounts do you use? Okay, you know, so that's yeah. not very practical advice. Yeah, very, <laughs> pra very practical, yes. Um, I think one thing that I can add is for insurance wise, um, always hang on to your hospital insurance in Singapore because you can actually use it overseas. You can exercise it overseas, especially if you have the private uh, hospital insurance uh, what they will do is that they'll prorate it <coughs> so it allows you to go to a private hospital overseas but they'll prorate it to the amounts here and because we charge a lot of money most likely a private hospital bill overseas mm -hmm. will be paid for 
a lot of travel insurances don't cover after you've been traveling for 90 days. So if you're going to oh, plan okay. for a trip that's more than 90 days overseas, mm. just note that your travel insurance might not um, might not still be active. You might not be able to exercise your travel insurance. So that's why I think it's always important to pair it with a, a high accident plan. Uh, definitely, you can have the option to pay for a loading on your hospital plan here. So what that just means is it, it, it will cover... Um, if you if you if you travel for more than ninety days and and consistently right, um, I think you need to tell your travel insurance insurer that that's your plan, and they might uh they might put a bit of loading on your hospital plan. Mm, so, a, a so it's very practical premium. advice for yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair, 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 fair. Yes. Anyone else? What I other think, things you yeah, use? Yeah, on that note, on travel insurances, because I've done both short term travels and long term travels. Mm. Yeah, she's right that Singapore travel insurances doesn't cover uh more than ninety days of outbound travel mm. so but that being said um the singapore travel insurances are still the most um comprehensive uh outside of 90 days if you're traveling for more than 90 days i use travel insurances nomad insurances like safety wing or there's passport card nomads there's a few other travel insurances out there um but one thing i would also always look at is because i do active sports so like sailing no not sailing so like um surfing or if you're skiing or you know i'm the kind that would cliff jump so looking at these <laughs> coverages making yeah. sure that you are covered by these coverages and also um as a nomad i leave and breathe with my laptop mm. there's one time i traveled without an insurance and yeah, my all my valuables got stolen. Nothing I can do about it. A lesson learned. Um, so that's for travel insurances. And then with spending, I love, love multi-currency cards like Wise and Revolut because they take 0% conversion fees unlike traditional credit cards. So I would draw local currencies from the eight from the local ATMs mm. in whatever country you are in, and it's just hassle free. I don't have to worry about changing money before I leave nowadays. Mm. And Singapore has you trip card as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there, there are a few providers, and and just to just to add on that, they don't take a percent on the spread, but they do charge you a conversion mm. fee, right? So it's as of the zero point zero five or zero point five percent, depending on which currency you're transacting. And today not sponsored, uh, but I found out that you know the trust card. Do you know about the the NTC Fair Price? Mm. Uh, I, I think NTC mm. and Stan Chart has a new oh. thing which is called the trust card. Okay. That is actually zero percent oh, FX, really? right? So yeah, and, and it's, it's it's on credit, right? So so it's it's, it's quite interesting, oh, yeah. Okay. Because I'm a lifelong user of Wise for a long time, right. for five six years already. When yeah. I ever since I started trade, because Wise got the weirdest currency. <laughs> they, yeah. they provide all the weird, weird yeah. currencies. Yeah. And you can do transfers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. transfers yeah. are helpful. Yeah. Exactly, right? So so I've been using that for a long time. Then mm. recently one of my friends told me that hey, you should use this. I mean, oh, it's it's a uh, yeah, and check it out. Yeah, the onboarding is so easy. Okay, before I sound like yeah. this is a this is not sponsored, uh, but trust, I'm uh, just saying if you're not sponsor, right, you better faster, right? Yeah. So, Guys, so come on. yeah, come yeah, on, what are you waiting for? Right? Yeah, but but it is it is uh zero percent, like actually zero percent okay. effects. Yeah, interesting. Okay, cool. A any other things you use? I think in terms of these two financial instruments, it's about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and like tracking, I do normal tracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, at some point when you have so much, you have so much buff <laughs> at the top, right? Like you have so much surplus, you don't really need to track to that level. No, you still need micro detail. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you feel so okay, okay. Yeah, okay. still set your monthly budgeting. Okay, for sure. okay. Even fair. though your expenses will be a lot lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. Yeah. Okay, Sam. Um, so actually, after I started traveling, uh, after I stopped photography, I kind of gave up on that whole. Not gave up lah. I kind of let go of that whole financial thing. I just, I stopped listening to podcasts. Thanks, stopped huh? tracking. So I lost <laughs> one listener. <laughs> you, you did, you did. Yeah. But now I'm back. It's like, whoa, whoa, guys, stop the same way. You came on the show, right? Yeah, yeah I, I just let it go like, because I just wanted to live life, right? Uh -huh. um, so my, what I do is really stock standard. Mm. Uh, it's just term insurance to mm. 65 I have no dependence. So actually term insurance is also kind of like plus minus, but mm. I still have it. Mm. Uh, hospital insurance, index funds, mm. uh, whole world index funds, what else? And then, yeah, la, SSBs and uh, what's that? T-bills, mm -hmm. really stock standard stuff. Mm -hmm. So nothing, nothing special going on. Okay. I would say that traveling does help you to see more um, other kinds of investments that you can do overseas. For mm -hmm. example, you know, now that I've been living in Bali and Thailand a lot more, I would, 
I would swap out some of my investment uh, mediums to eventually buy land. Mm. So, you know, for example, in Singapore, you can't really buy land anymore. Yes, or, you know, true. unless you're very, yeah. very yeah, 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 rich. Yeah. Um, but you tell me we're a vacuum cleaner company, you can buy anything. <laughs> <right>? Anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, because because we slow travel and because we know more people, there are other. In fact, it increases the the kind of um, ways that you can invest. For, mm. So, for example, if I have a friend in Thailand who wants me to invest in like a vending machine company, or if if we in Bali, some friends want to buy land and you know do real estate, we have these options because mm. we have the getting in on ground zero. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and then we have also the experience from Singapore. We kind of know what works, right? Because we've seen it go from like a third world country to a first world country mm. you kind of know okay at this stage what will what will the economy yeah. need I've never seen it I, I pretty much just to me I when I grew up I was already a first world country yeah, pretty yeah. much yeah. so I've not seen that like third world to first world I don't I, I mean I remember a little bit la, yeah I mean there's a little bit of the, the playground not so sweet la, but I don't <laughs> think it, I don't think it is a third world country by any measure MRT already there yeah, MRT was it there you know people, yeah, okay yeah. La, very long time ago the bus ticket still had to yeah, press correct, one correct. Good, good <laughs> I times. don't I remember <laughs> those were a long time ago. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Window Calling buses. Cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but it's interesting. And and, the, and to be fair, I think having ground touch, you know, mm. with wherever you are and investing locally, that there is a little bit of an advantage, you mm. know, uh, knowing the right people on the ground and, and all that. Right? But then mm. that will be a different, very long discussion. Yeah. But yeah, but that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I, I think for me, when I invest or when I think about my financial instruments now, I want it to be the least hassle mm. as possible because I just want to live like a really fast free peaceful life right mm. so it has to be something that I don't really have to manage mm. a lot mm. I can whereas tell. land orders yeah. you really need to have be quite hands on you need to know people you need to like have knowledge about the prices mm. the place stuff like that uh, I mean all kinds of financial In instruments time, la. La. Yeah, you, you yeah, don't need yeah, your yeah. knowledge la. yeah yeah of course things will happen course. when they're meant to happen yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Right. fair time. fair fair nice nice uh, any last things uh, if, if you have any questions for all of them because I think they all probably carry a lot more to share you put in your comment section and we'll, we'll kind of divert the questions around but yeah any last things you want to add in closing you know of this of this thing if I could talk about one thing is um, I, I know one of the questions that was in the brief was how how do we pursue slow travel and financial freedom at the same time or can we pursue both at the same time and I'd like to challenge that by asking <clears throat> why do you feel like you need to be financially free before you slow travel how old do you feel like you need to be before you finally leave does it mean that you are 50 when you finally reach your target amount then you leave life is already has already gone by we often think about money you know Money has been printed, printed so much during COVID. But the resources that we have, that we are borrowing from the earth, the air, the water, the, the greens, um, are limited. And the most important thing that is finite is time. If we wait till we finally have our goal, that I can promise you will keep changing, the goalpost will keep moving, we will never leave. But once you leave, you, you may realize that what you needed may not be so much. And you may realize that after you leave, if I'm already happy, do I really need to still work so hard? Then I think that's where a lot of the introspective thinking comes in. Uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And eventually, if you choose to come back, then it's also fine. Yeah, right? it's fine. Right? Yeah, because yeah. I, I, one of our other guests also mm. did the same thing yeah. two years in Australia, blah, blah, blah. Then, then came back yeah. and come back with a fresh pair of eyes. Fresh pair of eyes. And, and, I, and I think there's a lot of, yeah, and there's a lot of appreciation and strength to yeah. come back with that view yeah. rather than just kind of like sink. Yeah, because yeah. nothing here yeah. would have changed, but you would have changed. Yeah. We, yeah. we often think about like, we, we, I mean, it, it is it is a privilege to even complain about Singapore, mm, you know? Mm. And we complain about the culture and how stuck it is. But one way to think of it is not entirely living. But we are all Singaporeans. We are all kind of like tied to this place, whether we like it or not. And we can be like one leg in, one leg out. We're <laughs> out there and we let the culture and what we learn flow in. And that mm. way, this place can slowly change too. And one day, we also come home. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, practically speaking, slow travel, what, what it does is you it doesn't rush your holiday anymore. So if you 
if you do have a, a way to slow travel or to work remotely, um, the, the best thing is that you don't have to rush through what you want to do while you're overseas. Um, for sure, you get to take time to actually get to know the place that you're in. You get to experience life, how life is there. You get to hear yourself and your thoughts. And ultimately, I think you get that distance to know what it is in your life that you might want to tweak. Whether is it coming back to Singapore and, and, and maybe just changing one thing in your life or whether is it really like uprooting and going somewhere else. Um, everybody will have your own instinct, your, your own intuition. But I think slow travelling, what it does is it provides you with that distance to be able to hear yourself amidst all of the chaos that happens in their everyday life. I feel like the biggest challenge for most Singaporeans towards slow travel is their limited time off. Mm. Yeah. True. So like, how are you going to slow travel when you only have 14 days in a yeah. year? Mm, mm, mm. So Unless you completely uproot your life and quit your job. Yeah, yeah or build a block, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Blocks it works. Yeah. Or maybe it's yeah. just minor de- like minner changes, right? For example, if you, if you do have five days, can you maybe not go to like 10, the 10 different cities in one country? <laughs> can you maybe just use that five yeah. days just to be in one specific spot? Yeah, 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 yeah. Slowly yeah. travel. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally understand. You walk the same street five times, you will see five different, different. Yeah, uh, you walk with what you have, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, you meet yeah, yourself yeah. where you are at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Okay, awesome. Thanks for sharing oh. your point of view. It, it definitely was a lot deeper than what I was expecting, but it's great. I'm not saying it in a in a bad way. I think it's good, <laughs> right? And uh, if you if you coconuts have any questions, put it in the comment section and we'll address it. Okay. Oh, and if they want to connect with you, where can they find you? Uh, well, can, can yeah. oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can just plug it. <laughs> yeah. Bell around the world. Pull here, pull here. Okay. And uh, but, but is that the best place to yeah, connect yeah. with you? Yeah, you can find me. The there. website is anywhere, the best, yeah. not LinkedIn, no, no anywhere else. Well, from the website you can go everywhere. Okay, website, yeah. Bell Around the World. Okay. Uh for me it's mostly Instagram. So okay. uh Samuel Go is my Instagram, just my name. Super simple. Nice. You managed to get it. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite the cool. First yeah, <laughs> that's what fourteen years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. old IG people is like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I met uh, Jane Toyle. My, to- my Instagram. Y L. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Tor. Yeah. That's so my last name Gen is actually T O R. Before this thing is T O H. Right. T O R. It's very. It's very weird. Uh, okay. We will. We'll put everything in the description yes. <laughs> below. Okay. Yes. And uh, if you want to connect, go ahead. And uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.